guys. Um, so we are doing Ezekiel 25. Um, we're going to see that the next couple of chapters, this is very similar to uh, the ending of Jeremiah, the last um, several chapters of Jeremiah um, goes off into some little different prophecies against some of the countries surrounding Israel. And so there's going to be some prophecies against them for God's, God's judgment because um, what happened was God gave Israel this land and um, the people in it were vile and horrible and it's all God's land. So he has a right to give it to who he wants. And he um, promised that land to Israel. They were slaves in Egypt and in their absence, people were like, hey, it's a free for all and took Israel's land. So when God delivered them out of Egypt with Moses and they came back, they had to fight those people to get their land back. And so because God was with them, they had prevailing victory and were able to get the land back um, for what they fought. Unfortunately, they did. They were some of the people they let still live there. And that's what led to their downfall back into idolatry because God told them to utterly kick everybody out and they didn't. But that's neither here nor there. The point is that um, so once those nations were um, displaced and Israel got her land back um they had to go elsewhere and they so they kind of lived around on the outskirts of israel and they would try sometimes to to fight her and get the get their you know get back to the land that they had which was rightfully israel's and so they would never win because israel uh, god was for israel and god was fighting for her and so they never could but now once Israel fell to stronger nations like Babylon and Assyria, then all those little countries that could never beat them before joined up with Babylon and Assyria and were like, hey, this is our opportunity. We are going to take this land that we had before. And they would laugh at Israel's downfall and fight with the enemy, the bigger guys, to get that land because they were wimps and cowards and could never get it back on their own. So because they laughed at Israel and they kicked her when she was already down, God is giving prophecies against them um, because you don't do that. So a um, little commentary and we're going to ask God to join us um, for this lesson. Lord God, we thank you. We worship you. We glorify your name. We ask God right now that you would be here with us. Open our hearts and our minds to receive of your spirit. Enlighten our understanding for all these things that we're reading today. And um, that you would just be here with us. We love you and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Ezekiel 25 verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. And say to the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because you said, Aha, and laughed against my sanctuary when it was profaned, and against the land of Israel when it was desolate and laid waste, against the house of Judah when they were hauled off captive, Behold, therefore, I will deliver you. You laughed at them being slaves. So you're going to be a slave. A big lesson. That's why you don't ever laugh at somebody less fortunate than you, because that can be you in no time at all. So be careful who you make fun of. Be careful who you mock, because that can be you real quick. And so that's what God said to them. I'm going to make you slaves and deliver you to the men of the east, that they will have as a possession and they will set their palaces up in you and make their homes in you and they will eat your food and they will drink your milk. And I will make Reba a stable for camels and the Ammonites a couching place for flocks. You think you're all big and bad. I'm going to take your city and that's what it's, it's going to be feeding you stinky animals full in here. And you will know that I am the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, because you clapped your hands and stomped your feet and rejoiced in your heart 
with spite against the land of Israel. Behold, therefore, I will stretch out my hand on you and I will deliver you to be ruined to the heathen. And I will cut you off from the people and I will cause you to perish out of your country. You think that's funny? They got hauled off and lost their land. Now you're going to lose your land. I will destroy you. And you will know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, now we're going to Moab and Seir. Say, behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. Because Moab and Seir say, look at Judah. They've fallen just like everybody else. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities and from his cities that are on the frontier, the glory of the country, Beth Jeshemoth, Baalmeon, and Kiriathiam. And I will open it to the men of the east with the Ammonites and will give them to possess too, that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations anymore. And I will execute judgment upon Moab and they will know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God now, because Edom has dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Remember, they said, okay, um, you took my land. Now that you're gone, I'm going to take it back when it wasn't their land to begin with because it's all God's land and he has the right to say who lives there. Therefore, verse 13, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom. I will cut off man and animal from it. And I will make it empty from Taman, and they of Dedan will die by the sword. And I will take vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people Israel. That is, you know what? The faithfulness of God is unbelievable. That the Israelites were hauled off as slaves and destroyed and demolished because of their refusal to repent and serve God. They were in their sin. And while they are in their sin, God is fighting for them. God is like, you're not going to talk about my people like that. When they're awful... Unbelievable. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Verse 15. Thus saith the Lord God, because the Philistines have tried to take vengeance and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred, long time enemies of Israel. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will stretch out my hand on the Philistines and I will cut off the Kerithims and destroy the remnant of the seacoast. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes. And they will know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. We're going to continue on to, verse, to chapter 26. Um, I believe that's the same thing. We're just going now to Tyrus, the uh, judgments now against Tyrus. Um, 26, verse 1. It came to pass in the 11th year, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, because that Tyrus has said against Jerusalem, Aha, so it's another nation laughing at Jerusalem's downfall. She's broken. That used to be the gates of the people. She is turned unto me, and I will be replenished now that she is laid waste. So Tyrus is just celebrating at her death. You never celebrate someone's downfall, except the devil. Hallelujah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Tyrus, and I will cause many nations to come up against you, like the sea causes waves to come up. Man, those are great swells. And they shall destroy your walls. 
and break down your towers. And I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. And it will be a place for the spreading of nets in the middle of the sea, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God, and it shall become a spoil to all nations. And her daughters that are in the field will be killed by the sword, and they shall know that I am the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring upon Tyrus Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Ha! Oh. That's irony. So Tyrus is laughing at Jerusalem because Babylon came and took it, and now God's going to have Babylon come take Tyrus. Mm -mm. A king of kings from the north with horses, chariots, horsemen, armies, and many people. And he will kill your daughters with the sword in the field. And he will make a fort against you, cast up a mount against you, lift up the buckler against you. Again, this is all stuff um, we've talked about that was called besieging a city. All the cities were surrounded by massive, thick walls. And um, so they would cut off the water and the food supply to the people inside the walls. And then eventually um, they would build mounds and um, or put, you know, pieces of wood down up to the top um, to climb up and, and take it over, breach the wall. Um, and a buckler, we learned uh, the other day, was a smaller shield. Is a type of shield. And he shall set engines of war against your walls. So different kinds of, you know, the battering rams and the different things um, to shoot over. And with his axes, he will break down your towers. By reason of their abundance of his horses, their dust will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen. Man, yeah, that stampede, that rumble. Whoo. And the wheels and the chariots when he enters your gates. As men enter into a city where there is a breach. So there was an opening, a place they were able to get breakthrough. And that was the end of it. With the hoofs of his horses, he will tread down your streets. He will kill people with the sword. And your strong garrisons will go down to the ground. So garrisons were like troops. Okay. Um, and they shall make a spoil of all your money. They will make a prey of your merchandise. So they're going to have a field day, man. Take whatever they want. They're going to raid it. Break down your walls. Destroy your beautiful houses. And they will lay your stones, your timber, and your dust in the middle of water. Everything is going to be destroyed because you laughed at the downfall of others. So now your downfall is coming. Verse 13, and I will cause the noise of your songs to end. And the sound of your harps will not be heard anymore. And I will make you like the top of a rock. You will be a place to spread nets upon. You will not be built anymore because I, the Lord, have spoken it says the Lord God. Verse 15, Thus saith the Lord God to Tyrus, Shall not the islands shake at the sound of your fall? When the wounded cry, when the slaughter is made right in your midst. Then shall all the princes of the sea come down from their thrones, lay away their robes, put off their fancy garments. They will clothe themselves with trembling. They will sit upon the ground and tremble at every moment and be astonished at you. They will sit in shock and awe at the destruction. And they shall take up a lamentation for you and say to you, How are you destroyed? That was lived in by seafaring men. A famous city that was strong to the sea. She and everyone that lived in her that will cause their terror to be on all that haunt it. 
Now shall the islands tremble in the day of your fall. Yes, the islands that are in the sea will shake at your departure. What she once was, she won't be anymore. For thus saith the Lord God, when I make you desolate, you laughed at Israel being desolate, now it's going to happen to you. Like the cities that aren't lived in, when I bring up the deep upon you great waters, so they were a sea coast, and God is saying, I'm bringing upon you deep waters, it sounds like a hurricane. Or something. Man. It is so sad and heartbreaking, like it didn't have to be this way. So many things. It didn't have to be this way. Verse 20. When I bring you down, along with those that descend into the pit, with the people of old time, so you're going to die in the graves in the lower parts of the earth, in the places desolate of old, with them that go down to the pit, and you will not be lived in, and I will set your glory in the land of the living. I will make you a terror and you shall be no more, though you will be looked for. People are going to look for you and they'll never find you. Yet shall you never be found again, saith the Lord God. My goodness. I'm trying to see. Um, I think we're still, I know we're only at 16 minutes. Um, but I think we're still going to end there. Um, or maybe. Well, let's give it a try. We'll give it a try. Chapter 27. Let's go for broke. Hallelujah. 27.1. The word of the Lord came again to me saying, Now, son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus. Okay, back to this. And say unto Tyrus, O thou that are situated at the entrance of the sea. So again, a sea, it was a port. Which are a merchant of the people for many isles. Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, you have said, I am of perfect beauty. Your borders are in the midst of the seas. Your builders have perfected your beauty. They have made all your shipboards of fir trees of center. They have taken cedars from Lebanon to make masks for you. Cedars of Lebanon were the cream of the crop. It was the best wood that money could buy. And so Tyrus was, um, this city was just like New York City. Okay. It's a port everyone came to. It was industrious and all just booming with people and lots of merchandise trading, things going on, a big financial hub. Verse 6. The oaks of Bashan they use to make your oars. The company of the Asherites have made your benches from ivory, man, and uh, brought from the islands of Kittim. Fine linen broidered work from Egypt was what you spread to use as your sail. Blue and purple from the islands of Elisha, that's what covered you. The best of the best of the best. The inhabitants of Zidon and Arvad were your mariners, your wise men, O Tyrus, that were in you. They were, um, King James says, pilots. They piloted them ships. Those were the sailors. The ancients of Gebel, the wise men from there, were with you. As it says, your caulkers, those were other just all workers on the ship. The ships of the sea with their mariners were in you to occupy your merchandise. So lots of trade going on, being bought and sold. Um, people came there from all over because it was a port city. Big, big hub. They of Persia and Lud and Foot were in your army. They had men of war. Um, hang the shield and the helmet in you. Man, they were known for all this stuff. 
and set forth your comeliness, man, the strength and the power, again, very much like New York City. The men of Arvad with your army were written and drawn on the walls all around. And the Gamadims were in your towers. Those were special elite soldiers. They hung their shields on the walls all around and made your beauty perfect. It was just man decked out. Tarshish was your merchant by reason of the multitude of all kinds of riches. Silver, iron, tin, lead, and they traded with all your fares. Javan, Tubal, Meshach were all merchants. These are different cities. They traded the with people of men. Vessels of brass in your market, slaves, everything were traded. They of the house of Togerma traded in your fairs with horses and horsemen, mules. The men of Dedan came to be merchants. Many islands came to buy from you. They brought you presents in ivory horns and ebony. Syria was your merchant by reason of the multitude of all your wares, all the crafts that you made. They occupied in your fairs with, excuse me, emeralds, purple, embroidered work, fine linen, coral, agate, Judah, the land of Israel, were also buying and trading in you, in your markets, wheat um, from Minneth. And Peneg, honey, oil, balm, Damascus came and bought and sold in your midst. For the multitude of all your riches, the wine of Helbin and white wool. Dan also and Javan going in and out to and fro occupied all your marketplaces. Bright iron, acacia wood, Calamus were all in your market. Didan was also a merchant there, selling precious clothes for chariots. Arabia, all their princes of Kedar, they occupied in you with lambs, rams, goats. So they were even bringing in animals to trade, buy and sell. In these, they were your merchants. Merchants from Sheba and Ramah also came, occupied in your markets, the chief of all spices, with all precious stones, gold. Haran and Cana, Eden, were merchants, came from Sheba. Ashur, Kilmad, were all merchants at your fairs. These were all merchants of all kinds of things, blue clothes, embroidered work, chests of rich clothes bound with cords and made of cedar all among the merchandise that you had the ships of tarshish sang to you in your marketplaces and you were replenished all the time supply coming and going it was a big booming business there made very glorious in the midst of the seas your rowers have brought you into great waters. The east wind has broken you in the midst of the sea. Your riches and your fares, your merchandise, your sailors, all your workers, the occupiers of merchandise, all the men of war, they're all there in your midst and in your company and shall fall into the midst of the sea in the day of your ruin. All of it is going to collapse. If you can imagine the devastation that came to us here in America on September 11th from just several buildings falling in New York. If you can imagine what would happen if the entire city had fallen. That is the level that we're talking about. Destroyed. Gone. Done lost and they didn't have electronic money electronic things we're talking about the entire collapse of a major port city the suburbs will shake at the sound of the cry of your sailors and all that handle the oar the mariners the sailors will come down from their ships stand 
on the land and cause their voice to be heard against you and weep bitterly. And they shall cast up dust on their heads and wallow themselves in the ashes. Those were ritualistic signs of mourning to cover yourself in dust and ashes. And shave their heads. They will make themselves utterly bald for you. Clothe them with sackcloth. Those were other signs of mourning. Bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. And in their wailing, they will take up lamentation for you and lament over you, saying, What city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? When all your merchandise was lost at sea, you filled many people, you enriched the kings of the earth with all the multitude of the things that you had, your riches and your merchandise. And in the time when you will be broken by the seas in the depths of the water, your merchandise and all your people will fall. All the inhabitants of the islands will be astonished at you. Their kings will be so afraid. They will be troubled in their face. You can just see it on their faces, the devastation and the shock and the awe. Everything that you spent your life for is gone. Everything that you ran to is no longer there. Utter devastation. The merchants among the people will hiss at you. And remember, we learned before that um, this is King James, and in the Hebrew it was more like a, a shock. You shall be a terror and shall never be anymore. Complete and total destruction. And the saddest thing of all is that it should not have been, and it was only because she got prideful and arrogant and she laughed at the downfall of others. There is always a day of reckoning, folks. Always. People can get away with a lot for a long time, but you won't get away with it forever. There is a day of reckoning. Help us and let us return to the Lord with all our heart and be humble and not laugh at the downfall of others but help them wherever it is needed and wherever we can in the name of Jesus Christ be blessed thank you for listening bye bye